right, hi everybody. Um, oh gosh. All right, so I'm a little, a little nervous, which is kind of weird. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do today. Uh, we're getting really close to the end here. I only have a couple of these left, like two or three. I think I have three more after this. Uh, we're down to we progressively we whittled ourselves down to the bands that really meant the most to me. So here we are at uh, the uh, one and only Journey. Um, as always, I can't respond to comments as they happen, so sorry about that. I'll respond to them later. Um, so I'm going to talk a lot. I'm going to need, I don't know how much time I'm going to I'm gonna talk, but probably a lot. Um, that's why I gave myself just, it's just one, bro this is the first and only, not only, this is the, the first broadcast where I'm going to talk about just one band, because I probably can't talk about this band for a long time. So I'm going to go through all the stuff. I'm going to give personal anecdotes because really, when I started doing this, it became like, look what records I have just for the fun of it, and now it's just turning into like a ridiculous confessional where I'm just talking way too much about things that are not in anyone's business, but I feel like, do you care really? Not really, but now I can't help it. So we're going to get a lot of personal stories because Journey's been one of those bands. So let's start uh, here. <clears throat> and then we'll move on. And again, my, my take on this and my slant is all based on my experience and my taste. Nobody's going to agree with me on everything, and that's fine. Um, all right. Journey was a huge, huge, huge band for me. Um, I The first memory of Journey is I learned how to play faithfully on the piano. That's the first thing I ever learned how to play on the piano, ever, was faithfully. My father taught it to me, and it's in the key of B, which I've come to learn is a rare key for songs, pretty much. There's very few songs in B. Um, but Faithfully is in B. So my dad was in a band, and uh, he had a keyboard player, and I pl and the keyboard player had a uh, you know a bunch of piano patches in his keyboard. So I played the Faithfully da -da -da, um, on every patch he had, all 100 piano sounds. I play it once, I go to patch number two, play it twice, patch number three, play it again. So Faithfully is the very first song I ever learned to play on piano, ever. So that song's been with me since I was 11. Uh, Journey is in the popular consciousness, as we all know. Um, so that was my first memory of Journey. My mother had lights, on, not lights, Infinity on cassette. So I started listening to that when I was a kid. And then, um, oh, by the way, Faithfully. Here's an interesting thing about Faithfully. I'm going to forget some things, by the way, because I already forgot some things I wish I would have said when I was talking about Night Ranger. Faithfully doesn't rhyme. Uh, it's one of the only hit songs ever that pretty much doesn't rhyme, where the rhymes are incidental. If you ever think about it, and I didn't think about this until 10 years ago, faithfully, Highway Run Into the Midnight Sun, that rhymes. I think that was like the first couple lines, so that was on, that purposely rhymed. Then you think about the rest of the song, if you listen to it, doesn't rhyme. Hardly at all. Wheels go round and round, you're on my mind. Restless heart, sleep alone tonight. Sending all my love along the wire. It's just talking. There's like no rhymes. In that song, I think there's three rhymes in that song. I think they're just completely because. I think they just happen. I think that's interesting, but I'm also a nerd who finds things like that. But now for the rest of your life, if you're watching this, you'll listen to Faithfully and go, this song doesn't rhyme. How many other hit songs don't rhyme? There you go. Um, all right. Uh, and then in high school is when, you know, that's where we all find our, our, our band. So, again, Columbia House Records was a big deal because when I was a kid, you know, 10, 12 albums for a penny, and everybody was doing it. Um, so my friends did that, and they had a couple of Journey records, and Escape was the one they had. So I also remember that uh, we could play our own music in art class, and somebody brought an Escape on tape, and she played the song Still They Ride over. She played the song Still They Ride, went back up, rewound it, played it, rewound it, it rewinded it, played it again, Still They Ride, all to art, art class. And I was like, this is a great song. And they got she played it so much that other students were like, come on, quit playing that song. Well, it's a beautiful song, right? So I got into Journey in high school and got that record. Of course, when you're in high school, that's when you buy all the records. And every Journey record, it just it's. I know this sounds really weird and goofy, but there's a few bands like them, The Storm, Survivor, Bad English, uh, Night Ranger, Honeymoon Suite, where in my world, they kind of live in the sky around where I grew up because this music, I would listen to it and be just, it was, I don't know how to explain it. That's the best way I can put it. Um... I guess the album covers kind of helped that too because all the Journey, Journey album covers are just awesome. I mean, I love the whole thing. So, um, all right, I'm going to shut up because you don't care about any of this. I've been talking for five minutes already. I haven't talked about any of the records, have I? So here we go. I'm going to geek out. Um, 
Forgive me, I'm going to break Journey up into sections. You might think that's kind of a cop-out, but it's not. It's the way that I see the band. You know, they were this band, and then they were this band, and then they were this band, and I can't bring it to myself to meld them all together and rank them. I can't do that. It doesn't make sense for me, so sorry. So here we go. Uh, most of you who are watching this are music crazy people, so you'll know this, but some of you may not. Journey had three albums before Steve Perry. They were kind of more of a jam band, more... Um, I don't know how to explain it, because any word I use, somebody will disagree. By the way, before we go any further, I got my braces off. Yay! No more braces. Sorry. Just excited about that. Uh, happened yesterday. Oh, they hurt, though. All right. Journey was a jam band, kind of. Jam band might not be... What jam band means to me might not be what jam band means to you. But they put out three records before Steve Perry that no one's ever heard of, right? You guys don't know these records. And to be honest, this doesn't do much for me, but... Um, it's just being honest, but I'll show them to you because that was the whole point. We're showing my music collection. There's Journey self-titled. There you go. Um, I don't remember much about this because I'll be honest. I listened to these albums years ago, and um, I don't remember much because it didn't hook me. It wasn't melodic enough. But there you go. Journey's first record. Uh, Journey's what was second? Wasn't this one second? Into the look into the future. Wasn't there a song on here that had the same bass run as uh, Carry On Wayward Son? I thought there was one. I might be wrong about that. By the way, the back of this, or the front, actually, the whole thing, the room, room, room. I lived in an apartment complex till I was seven years old, and you come out the front, the, the door, and that's what the apartment complex looked like. It's just a section, then a section, then a section. Did anybody else do that, grow up in an apartment complex? Because that's what that always reminds me of, being a kid, because it's just what it looked like, right? Anyway, there you go, look into the future. Then they put out Next. Um, look at those nerds. There you go. Um, everybody that's in that this band, uh, Neil Schoen and Ross Fowler, by the way. Neil Schoen's the only one that's been on every record. Neil Sean, Schoen. I say Schoen, but I think it's Sean. Um, the Greg Rowley are in it, and then, uh, or excuse me, Ross Fowler is in it, and then Greg Rowley, Ainsley Dunn. Is it Ainsley Dunbar? Ainsley? Ainsley? I don't know. I say Ainsley Dunbar. Um, but there you go. So Journey had three records before Steve Perry joined. A lot of you know the, the, the history of Journey better than I do, so if I get any of this wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to rank these because I don't really remember much about them. Spaceman, I remember. I like the song Spaceman. And um, there's some song in here, I swear, has the same bass run as Carrying Wayward Son. But there you go. First little incarnation of Journey. Didn't really do much, um, but it started the ball rolling, right? And Journey got their name by a radio phone-in contest. Somebody else named the band in, in California, San Francisco, I think. All right, now we get into the meat and potatoes of Journey, when they became Journey. Before I do that, I'm going to show you the off, offshoot um, Journey albums that I own because they're not full-on Journey records. So there's the um, the greatest hits. Everybody's got the greatest hits. I listened to this record when I was a kid. Journey, you, you get the greatest hits, and that's what you listen to, the greatest hits. So there you go. One of the best. I think it's like the seventh best-selling greatest hits album of all time. Wouldn't it be? It's so good. So good. I listen to this all the time when I came off from high school, over and over, and stare at the cover and like this actual CD. Hmm. I love how I used to put the songwriters on the disc. Anyway, there you go. Uh, greatest hits. Um, and then, and this is another band. When I got into them, they were broken up. When I got into them, they were done. They'd been on 86, and there was like no more Journey music. They weren't touring. They were done. I was, again, heartbroken, like one of the greatest bands ever, and they're gone. There's no more. That's it. Uh, so when they put out Time 3, which anyone's got this, I was very happy about this. Three disc set. Just basically just the greatest hits. Of, but it's like some, at the time, unreleased stuff. And a lot of great stuff on here. I remember the song, All That Really Matters, had Jonathan Cain singing. Um, and just alternate takes of things. And uh, uh, La Raza Del Sol was on here, which is cool. But it's a neat little package to have, for the, especially at the time, because Journey was done. And they weren't as big as they are now. There was a long time. There was like, how long was it, guys? Like 12 years, 15 years when it was not cool to like Journey. When Journey was not cool. From like 90 to 2005 almost. They were just not cool. I never stopped listening to Journey. I didn't give a crap what anybody think. In fact, I play music for a living. And I remember like 10, 12 years ago, uh, I would play Don't Stop Believing when I had nothing else to play. Just to throw it. Because nobody would ever request it. Because nobody thought about Journey like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Seriously. So they were not popular for quite a while, and then they kind of came back, which is awesome. So there you go. There's the uh, Time Cubed collection. Uh, I don't... Uh, Escape is a live album. I don't care... For, oh, excuse me. Captured is a live album. Don't care for live albums, so there you go. I don't get much out of this. Hopelessly in Love is a pretty cool song. Party's over. 
And then, a uh, few of you know this, Journey did a record before they did Escape uh, for a movie soundtrack, uh, Dream After Dream. This is um, interesting, and I can't really put it in the ranking either, because for me it doesn't really fit in. It's just kind of, it's like when Toto did Dune. It's not really a Toto record, but it is, but it isn't. Um, this is not, I mean, if you're expecting Journey classic, it's not really that. It's, it's there's only singing, it's almost mostly instrumentals. There's only three songs with singing, and they're not, it's not bad, it's just different. And this is before they transitioned from Greg Rowley to Jonathan Cain. Did I lose any of you yet? Have I talked for 10 minutes without really saying anything? I knew I would. I'm really sorry, guys. This is how my brain works. And I want to get done with this and be happy. And again, I'm a music junkie. Love it all. Um, all right. Now I'm going to, um, how should I do this? Should I go chronologically? No, I'm not. Well, uh, I guess I should. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Because I'm going to talk about the best stuff last. So Journey was Journey for 78 to 90 to 86. So we'll get to the meat and potatoes of Journey that everybody knows last. Uh, after Steve Perry left, they made some more records with uh, Steve Augieri from Tall Stories. So I got, I'm just going to show you those real quick. I didn't rank these either. I did not rank the post-Perry stuff with the Perry stuff. I saw it get way too confusing. And in my mind, they're different factions of the band. So um, Journey Arrival, there's that, 2001. This is the comeback. This is the first record without Steve Perry. Uh, pretty good, but to me it was a little, it was too bloated for me. I'm sorry. There's 15 songs. Like, I think five of them are over five minutes. Two of them are over six minutes. It's a very long album. Um, it's not bad. It's just, it's not bad. It's just, it's pretty bloated for me. I like more concise, succinct records. But if there's some good stuff on here, higher place, and Jack Blaze did some writing on this. Uh, all the way, Signs of Life. I love Signs of Life. Signs of Life sounds like classic journey. Um, and, I mean, Steve Ogieri, what kind of a, how daunting is it to make the first journey record without Steve Perry? Uh, to Be Alive Again is great. Kiss Me Softly, I like. I think Jack Blaze co wrote that also. Uh, but to me, this was good, but there was a lot of stuff on. It was just long. It was just really long. And, um, you know, another, another reason I don't incorporate this incorporate this version of Journey into Classic Journey is because, I mean, there's as many people in this shot of Journey as there is in Bad English. There's three guys in Bad English in this at this point, too. So it is Journey, but it's not quite the Journey. So, uh, but Arrival, it's good. You, I mean, it's, it's worth having if you're a big Journey fan, but it's not quite the same. Steve Ogieri did a great job, as good as anybody could do. Um, so there's Arrival, and then they made Red 13, this was weird for me, I didn't like it, I'm sorry, I wanted to like it, um, but I did. I couldn't like it, but I got it because I'm a huge fan and I'll buy anything they have that I can get my hands on, so I can't say anything about this other than it's a four song EP, um, and this was my second copy because my first copy somebody stole from me, somebody stole, ugh, somebody stole this and Alton Elvis blowing the bricks and Jude Coles start the car and Wigwam, oh, they stole like 10 things that were hard to find. Breaks my heart. Uh, anyway, there you go. Red 13. And then uh, they made Generations. Uh, most people didn't like this, but I actually like this more than I like Arrival. I know. I'm sorry. Um, Faith in the Heartland is cool. I really like the song Gone Crazy with Ross Valerie singing. Is that weird? Interesting thing about this record is that every person in this band sings at least one song. They all take turns on lead vocals, um, which I don't know how many other bands have done. Like the Beatles do it, right? Anyone else? Um, but again, it's hit and miss. I like Out of Harm's Way. Um, the best song on here is the bonus track, Never Too Late. Listen to the song Never Too Late with Dean, Kish I say Kash Kastronovo, Kastron I don't know, uh, singing the last song, Never Too Late. is killer. Uh, co-written by Jack Blades, and I swear I hear Jack Blades on the background vocals at the end. But that's my favorite song on here is the bonus track. Great song. Look up Never Too Late by Journey. Uh, love it. But again, this record kind of goes, eh, for me. But I'm a huge fan, and I bought it. 2005, I think, right? Yeah, they still weren't popular. Uh, uh, so then uh, Steve Ajeri, they got rid of him, or, I mean, it depends on who you ask. He lost his voice. I don't know. Who can sing like that anyway? Who can sing like, nobody can sing like Steve Perry all night, every night. It's not possible. That's a whole other discussion, which I might talk about here. Why not? Uh, so then they got the uh, Filipino guy, uh, Arnel P Panada. Pan I never say his name right, who's just insanely, I mean, guy can sing. Um, and I've seen them live with him. He's very good, very gracious. He does the trick. And then they made uh, they made Revelation with him. 
This is really good. I was very, very happy with this. This is their best-selling record without Steve Perry, and it deserves to be. It's a great record. Um, it's actually, well, it's it's two records. It's um, they, they re-recorded all their old classics with the new singer. I think they do that for publishing reasons, I think is why they do that. But to me, it seems like a shit ton of work. Uh, but this was really good. This record had was very consistent. Never Walk Away, classic Journey Sound. Change for the Better is great. Wow, the Stream is great. Faith in the Heart. I mean, all these songs. The only one I didn't like was Like a Sun Shower, the second song. I didn't care for that. Other than that, there's nine great songs in here. So if you love the classic Journey stuff and you can overlook that it's not Steve Perry's voice, um, the Revelation is actually Revelation is really great. It's very solid. Uh, actually, it must be hard to find because brand new, it's like 30 bucks now. But you can get used copies for like 7 or 8 bucks. Uh, but I would definitely, if you love Journey and you didn't keep up on them, this this was good. This is very good. It's Jonathan Cain and, and Neil Schoen do all the writing, and they, they deliver, man. This is a very polished, great record. So, Revelation, good. And then uh, their last record they put out four or five years ago, four years ago, 2011, five years ago, Eclipse um, from 2011. This is more guitar-oriented. It's a little more proggy. I mean, for Journey proggy. Because Neil Schoen... It's always been a rock guitarist. He's maybe my, I think he's my favorite lead guitarist of all time. Him and Steve Lukather can really be noty and melodic, but still can really play. But they really serve the song in their solos. They're beautiful, beautiful lead players. Um, but he's always wanted to rock more. You know, I mean, Neil Sean has always kind of been, I hate to say it, but I think he's always been frustrated that he's not in a rock, rock band. That the flowery stuff is what people latch on to, myself included. So this is a more rock record. And I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't love it. It was, it was, um, it was, it, I just didn't love it. It just didn't hook me. A couple good songs on here. Edge of the Moment was cool. Anything is possible, I liked. But I really didn't get much out of the rest of this. I really wanted to. I wanted to badly because Revelation was so great. I thought they're going to continue with the new singer and keep making great records. But uh, it didn't move me. And sadly, uh, I've read this, it sold... This sold 10 times with this. I think this sold like 150,000 copies. It's a freaking journey, everybody, but it's not great. Uh, I've seen in interviews that they probably won't make another record because they only sold like 100,000 copies. And they're like, you spend a year of your life, you spend a lot of money, you write, and then for them, they don't have to. They can just go out and play all the old songs. Um, and I probably have to go revisit this because honestly, I haven't listened to it in five years. There might be another song or two that I like, but as a whole, I was disappointed. But I do love that they went back to the one word title, Eclipse, you know, Revelation. Uh, Generations, I thought, was a strange title. Um, Arrival was a great title while we're talking about titles. Because that's another great thing about Journey also, the album titles. But anyway, there's the records they made after Steve Perry. Uh, Arrival was good but bloated. Uh, of all of them, I felt that uh, Revelation was the best. Um, and there you go. Yes? Okay. How long have I been talking? 15 minutes, and I haven't even talked about the real journey. <laughs> all right, I'm going to rank these now, all right? Classic Journey. Uh, they made seven records with the classic lineup, in my opinion. The classic line. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that because there's only two guys on the last record that were on the first one, Neil Sean and Steve Perry. Oh, no, Ross Valerie. Okay, never mind. <laughs> the classic lineup for me is from 78 to 96. They made seven records. And touch this all, right? I mean, I know it sounds really cheesy, but I get really emotional about, about music because it meant a lot to me. And this band, more than very, I mean, very few bands meant as much to me. I, almost no other band did I want to write this way. I love Van Halen, but I knew I couldn't write that way. I love a lot of other bands, but I knew I couldn't. I love Whitesnake. I can't write like that. But Journey, I was like, I want to be Jonathan Cain. I want to be the keyboard player and co-write and have this wonderful voice sing my songs. Oh my gosh. All right, so we're going to rank them. Here we go. Um, of the uh, classic lineup of Journey, seven records. Here we go. Number seven for me. And these are all great. Just because it's on the bottom doesn't mean it's bad. It's still great. Number seven for me, nobody get angry, was uh, Departure. Still love it. Love the album art. I love all this stuff. The whole concept of this, like, one word titles and the album art is so beautiful. I love this stuff. Don't we all love this? Ugh. Uh, but number seven for me, because for me, this was still not quite in the polished area. And I feel like, I feel like Infinity and Evolution, they were like, it was like a new relationship and everything was exciting and the creativity was really on. 
And then this isn't bad, but it's kind of waning, I think, a little bit, and they've been together forever. Still great stuff on here. Any Way You Want It is a great song. I am surprised that I love Any Way You Want It because the chord changes never change. G, F sharp, E, C, repeat. It never changes. The whole song is the same chord progression, so it's I Should Hate. Drives me crazy, but I love it. Why? Because Steve Perry can sing. God, he can sing. Any Way You Want It, it's good. Uh, and then I kind of glossed over a lot of this, to be honest. Where Were You? I love Where Were You. I'm Crying is good. Line of Fire. Good Morning Girl is nice. And Stay A While. I like Stay A While. But everything I like is like the second half of the record. The first half doesn't do much for me. Uh, so I don't have much to say about this record other than, you know, it kept them alive. Any Way You Want It kept them alive, gave them a hit. But that's really the only song on this record you would know is Any, is any Way You Want It. In fact, I think of all the Journey albums... This may be the only one where only one song was really a hit, I think, with Steve Perry. Um, I might be wrong about that. <clears throat> anyway, there you go. Number seven, uh, Departure. Number six, for me, Evolution. Still great. Still great. Um, but but um, number six, great stuff on here, the Maj Majestic, Too Late, Love Too Late, Love and Touch and Squeezing. Which was Steve Perry's, he wrote that alone. It's an homage to Sam Cooke. What's the song? It's a song by Sam, Sam Cooke that he's, oh God, what is it? Never Gonna Love This. Oh God, I can't think of it. But it's a, uh, it was him being Sam Cooke, which is, who's, which is fine. City of the Angels is great. Uh, I love Sweet and Simple. There's this run that Steve Perry does, like three minutes into Sweet and Simple. It's, I can't, there's no way I can do it, but it's insanity. We should look it up. It's what? It's insane. That guy was insane. Oh, by the way, I'm going to make a Spotify playlist of all the great album cut journey stuff and put it on this when I'm done. So, uh, great stuff. Anyway, uh, love Sweet and Simple. Loving You is Easy. Just the same way. I love Just the Same Way. Um, yeah, that was on the radio growing up in the Midwest. Anybody know Just the Same Way? Coley vocals by Greg Rowley. Um, so that's still on the radio. Um, so just the same way, Love and Touch and Squeeze and things you know off this. But still, still get it. Get all these Journey records. Oh, by the way, I know I'm a broken record. Departure is on Amazon Prime for $5. Evolution is on Amazon Prime for $6. Get it. Get them all. There you go. Number six for me, Evolution. Number five. I'm going to get pushback on this a little bit because I know there's a couple people that this is their favorite Journey record. So sorry. Number five for me is Raised on Radio. Still love it, all right? But number five for me is Raised on Radio on Amazon Prime for $5. Um, there are unbelievable songs on here, but there's certain things about it that I didn't like. I didn't like that now there's no Steve Smith and Ross Valerie. And there's just some songs I didn't care for. I don't really care. Not a lot. There's only a couple, but it could have been you, The Eyes of a Woman. Don't really like those, but I mean... Girl Can't Help It, I actually don't like that much. But I absolutely adore Positive Touch. I adore Suzanne. Suzanne is so great. This is, again, in high school when I started. I mean, I listened to all this in high school. This is when it hit me. I was 16 years old and Suzanne. I used to stare at this album cover, and I wanted to go here. I wanted to go where this place is, wherever this is. And, like, here's the sky, and I'd look at my sky in the Midwest and listen to Why Can't This Night Go On Forever and just kind of... Uh, I, mean, I still love this record. Right? I love it. Um... Be Good to Yourself is a great song. Happy to Give. Raised on Radio is cool. I, when I was a kid, I couldn't figure out why the lyrics for Raised on Radio weren't printed in here. And then I was like older, I realized they were just titles of other songs and you don't have permission to do that. Is that right? Because that's what I told myself. Um, but uh, I love Why Can't This Night Go On Forever. Love it. And at the time, you know, Journey was broken up. And I always had this stupid thing in my head where the last song on the last record that a band made should mean something. You know, like Vixen's last song on their second record was called Wrecking Ball. And I thought that's kind of cool because they're broken up now. And I put a, a, a stupid amount of importance on the last song on the last record of a band's career. That's why I always thought it sucked that the last Night Ranger song was Woman in Love because it wasn't really a great encore. Um, but that's a dumb way to think of it. They don't know it's going to be their last record when they're making it. But why can't this night go on forever? If you love the Journey classic ballad stuff, the real, the beautiful piano stuff... and Look up Why Can't This Night Go On Forever. I'll put it on the Spotify playlist. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. The, the, uh, the, the voicings, the, the, the major seven and the melody of the verses, uh, it's gorgeous. And actually, 
uh, the end of that song when they're doing the uh, when Steve Perry's doing the riffing and the bass and going um, da, 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 da. it's just going back and forth between the one and the four chord you know da, da. if you listen to that and then listen to the extended outro of everything I do I do it for you by Brian Adams it's the same thing and I found that song and I went oh it's Brian Adams I wonder if they found that I wonder if they ripped that off but they didn't because there's only it's one it's one and four chord but uh, why can't this night go on forever? Gorgeous song. What I hated about this record, still hate about this record, is that they broke the chain of of the album titles, of the one word album titles that were supposed to tell a story, which is brilliant and I love it and it still stands up, which is why my last record was called Promise. While we're talking about big blue album covers with one title, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make that. So this was supposed to be called Freedom. Because it was Escape, Frontiers, Freedom. And Steve Perry decided to change the name to Raised on Radio. And this picture uh, of the radio station is a radio station that somebody in his family owned. And it just got to be the Steve Perry show. I love Steve Perry, but stick with the legacy. So that really has always bothered me. That this was supposed to be called Freedom with the scar Scarab on it. And it just got all messed up. And then they broke up and whatever. So, uh, But still a great, great record. Amazon Prime, $5.00. Great. The song, Why Can't Tonight Go On Forever, alone is worth it. There you go. All right, number five. Number four for me. How can I talk this much? Uh, Trial by Fire. Trial by Fire gets panned by a lot of people because it was ballad heavy. This was their comeback record. Um, and I adore this album. I love this record. This came out in 96. I just got a job being a dispatcher. It was October when this came out, I think. And I didn't know the journey was getting back together. I remember um, hearing Message of Love in a car with my friends Sean and Paul. And it came on the radio. And I went, is that Journey? And I was, this is before the internet. And I was so aware of Journey that I knew it was a new song. And I'm like, oh my God, Journey, does Journey have a new song? I lost my mind in my friend Paul's parking lot. Just sitting there going, what? I had no idea they were making a new record. So... I, was, I can't explain how exciting that was. One of my favorite bands who was broken up had a new record coming out. And I bought this the day it came out. And I mean, over, this was the soundtrack of my life for three months, two months at least. And just, and I poured over everything. There's the concert. I went and saw them. Uh, but of course, they weren't touring with Steve Perry. So that's another story. Um, but just looked at this. And it was the classic lineup with Steve Smith and Ross Valerie. And I was just like, oh my God, the guys are, oh. And, I know other people don't really care about this record. I felt they delivered. Yeah, it was a little bit ballad heavy, but that's what Journey does. It's Journey. That's what they do. Um, adore this album. Message of Love is a wonderful song. Um, I love how Neil Sean can just Neil Sean can just make emotion with three notes, but it works. Da -da 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 and like I'm buying it, man. I love Message of Love. One more is great. When you love a woman was their only Grammy nominated song. Uh, Journey's only been up for a Grammy one time. They didn't win, and it was for a song on this record. That's true. Uh, if You Should Break Your Heart should have been on the radio everywhere. Same thing with Forever in Blue should have been on the radio everywhere. Castle's Burn is great. I don't like Don't Be Down on Me, Baby, or Still She Cries, or Colors of Spirit. Track 7, 8, 9 just fell out for me, and then I got right back into it at the end. I love When I Think of You. When I Think of You is one of the most beautiful ballads Journey ever did. Look it up. It's gorgeous. And then the the, 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 the the solo when Neil Sean plays the da 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 does that two times through and then falls out, but then the strings pick up that melody and play the strings, and then Neil Sean does a guitar solo over the strings, and then it breaks. It's so good. So good. Uh, that song is heartbreaking. Um, I didn't know this until about a year ago. The song's actually about Steve Perry's mother. Didn't know that. Because it sounds like it's about a relationship, but it's about his mother. Uh, beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, easy to fall. I love that. Can't tame the lion. Neil Sean gets to actually play the guitar like he means it. It's just the rain is beautiful. Remember, this is '96. It's the, it's the middle of the '90s when nobody gave a, gave a shit about Journey. But I love this record so much. Uh, Trial by Fire, great song. This is really good. Amazon Prime, six dollars. Um, I bought it for a friend, and when it came, it had different artwork. See how different the back is? The back is different. So. I was like, what's up with that? So I had to have this copy, right? So I ordered my own uh, copy with different artwork and it's got different pictures in it and 
because they reissued everything. But that's, we'll get to that. Anyway, there you go. Trial by Fire, number four. Great, great, great album. Uh, they pitched a couple things down for Steve Perry. That's why um, When You Love a Woman is in D flat instead of D because his voice was a little bit not what it used to be. By the way, really quickly, while we're talking about this, the voice, I've said it before, people are very unforgiving when it comes to rock vocalists' voice. When you get older, the voice changes. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, your voice changes as you get older. There's, it's just the way, it's a muscle. And I've said it before, people, can't, people do not expect Olympic athletes to do things in their 40s and 50s that they did in their 20s because they can't. It's a muscle. You can't do it. So very few people are Sammy Hagar. Very few people are Steven Tyler who can keep it. And Steve Perry did really well. He still had most of his voice. Um, but people are, people want Journey to get back together and Steve Perry to go tour. Steve Perry is 67 years old, I think. He can't sing that anymore. It's not his fault. He's 67 years old, and he didn't take care of his voice either. They toured too much, and they kind of wrecked his beautiful voice. So people just, I just get, I take it very personal because I lo I've lost range. I can't sing like I could when I was 25, and you shouldn't expect your favorite rock singers to. You can wish, but they can't do it. Not their fault, man. Rock music is brutal on the voice. So anyway, I'm off topic. I'm sorry. There we go. Number three. Number three journey album for me. Infinity. This is killer, man. This is their first record with Steve Perry, and I really love it. It's very 70s. I mean, it's 1978, and my mom had this on tape, but I listened to this over and over and over and over again. It's 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 a great record. I lo love the song Winds of March. Anybody know Winds of March? It's really different for Journey, but I love it, and Steve Perry just sings just, I don't know how he hits some of those notes. He holds out that note in the end of, of Winds of March so wonderfully. I like every song on here except for Can Do. Can Do is goofy as hell. You can do what you want to. It's just, what what is that? Stupid. But the whole rest of this album is wonderful, and it's really like new blood, new life, the energy's great. And God, his voice. I think Steve, and Steve Perry is like 31, I think, when they made this record. Something like that. And he was just about to give up. He was just about to give up and being a singer. Because he'd been at it forever. He'd been playing drums in bands. He plays drums. You know that? But every song is great. La Du Da is awesome. Uh, Patiently is the first song that Neil Sean and uh, Steve Perry wrote together. Um, Something to Hide is wonderful. Winds of, I'm telling you, Winds of March. I'll put it on the Spotify list. Open the Door is great. Um, it's just, it's so 70s. Look at everybody. So great. Um, but I love this record. I love the, the artwork. Nothing I can say about it, really. It's just really, really good. Amazon Prime, six bucks. My third favorite Journey record. Great, great album. Really good. Um, all right, there's two left. Everybody knows what they are, right? Is there anybody, I guess there are people where these are not their top two, but me, I love the corporate rock. I love the, uh, polished sound. <laughs> And uh, this is when Jonathan Cain joined the group. And Jonathan Cain brought in, to me, I love all the Journey. This is number three. But Jonathan Cain kind of cemented to me what Journey was with his songwriting. He brought in something, I think, that, that took Steve Perry a little bit further. Because they're both very, very melodic writers. So, there's two left, right? Everybody knows what they are, pretty much. And again, just like Bon Jovi and Def Leppard, neck and neck, man. Neck and neck. They're so close. Um... But for me, the number two Journey record is Escape. I love. I mean, who doesn't love Escape? This is their most, their best-selling record. This has more of their classic songs on it, and I love every song on here uh, except Lay It Down. And I don't hate Lay It Down. It just is what it is. But this album, again, high school. I wanted to go here. I wanted to. I stared at it. I just was just and listened to the music and. And took it all in. And this is when I was really getting into like how they put the songwriters on here. Oh, love it. So every song is great. Don't Stop Believing. You know, it's not it's not what it is. It, 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 isn't, um, it isn't then what it is now. It's taking on the, you know, the, the classic, you know, the iconic status. But, um, but love it. Don't Stop Believing, by the way, is a very strangely arranged song. Like, there's not really a chorus, but there is a chorus, but there's not a chorus. And then the Don't Stop Believing, the title comes at the end when it's fading out. Very strange, very strange uh, uh, arrangement on that song, but it works. And Steve Perry just sings like crazy. A Stone in Love, Love, Stone in Love, Who's Crying Now, Beautiful. 
Keep on running. I always loved in high school. Keep on running. It's okay. Love. Keep on running. Uh, Still They Ride, of course. Listen to over and over and over and over again. Um, just love Still They Ride. Um, who doesn't? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm losing steam now. I'm getting distracted because people are getting upset with me. Go back to the beginning of the video when I said I have my own opinions and I'm not responding to comments. Jeez. Everyone gets so upset. Um, <laughs> Um, all right, Escape is a great song. Lay it down. Uh, Dead or Alive is great. Mother, Father is gorgeous. And then Open Arms, you know. Uh, I remember, I seriously do remember the very first time I heard Open Arms and the piano intro, and I was like, it was like that's what I that's it. Like that's the that's the piano. That's perfect. It's perfect the way it's played. The voicing. Dun, gun, 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 gun. By the way, Open Arms. Uh, Jonathan Cain had that idea for a couple years. And when he was in the babies, he wanted to work on it with uh, John Waite. He said, with John Waite, we should work on this idea. Have John Waite thought it was too uh, sappy and didn't want to work on it. <laughs> so John Waite passed on Open Arms, uh, at least the musical part of it. Um, but what a wonderful song. Also strangely arranged. This is a short song. Um, but this is, I mean, this changed everything. This changed everything for, uh, for Journey. And to this day, you can hear one, two, three... Four, at least four of these songs on the radio every single day. And there was a video game. It was so big that Atari made a video game of Journey. Um, but you got to get this uh, on Amazon Prime. This one's $8 because I know people will pay for it. But, I mean, it's just, it is it is essential, a classic. If you like music at all, this is one of those albums you must own. You must own. Have to own it. Uh, and it's wonderful. And, again, Jonathan King comes in a band and it's a new blood. And they're just, like, very, very excited. And you can tell. So, Escape, number two, get this record. We're sleazy in number one. What's number one, everybody? Someone's got to know. And again, it was a, it was very, very close for me. And it might have just been an emotional thing. Number one for me, my favorite Journey record of all time, Frontiers, man. This might be because uh, Faithfully is on here, and that's the first song I learned to play on the piano. Um, Separate Ways is one of the greatest songs of its kind with the keyboards and the big vocals, but it's got power. I mean, Separate Ways is a killer, killer album uh, track. Great, great, great song. They wrote that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they wrote that so they'd have a good concert opener song. Like, here's the first song we're going to play. So great. It doesn't even sound like a... It sounds a little dated, I guess, but it's just gorgeous. Steve Perry sings his ass off. It's so great. Love Separate Ways. Sender My Love is a beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, great chord voicings on that. Love Sender, Sender My Love. And, and Neil Sean, again, plays, he serves the song. He doesn't play too flashy. And he, da 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 But the melodies are gorgeous. Chain Reaction, I love Chain Reaction. Uh, After the Fall, another beautiful, beautiful song. Uh, and then Faithfully, which is, will be, will outlive us all. I mean, the song Faithfully will outlive all of us. Um, Edge of the Blade. Um, great guitar rock. I'm sure Neil Sean was happy about that. You listen to Steve Perry riff at the end with his crazy high range. Like he really didn't sing enough, enough um, rock stuff. Really, he really could rock. He just never went anywhere. Troubled Child was almost left off this disc. It was added at the end, and I love Troubled Child. Just hearing Steve Perry sing the word moon, just like hearing him sing, you know, was there at the moon? It holds that out forever. I think that song's an F minor. It's a weird key. Is it an F minor? I might be wrong about that. Um, but Trouble Child is beautiful. And then we get to Back Talk, which is just shit. Back Talk is a stupid song. I'm sorry. They actually put that record, that song on this record and took off uh, Ask the Lonely. That was supposed to be. And then Frontiers. I love the song, the song Frontiers. I love Rubicon. And just, it's so of its time. Again, I stared at the album cover and I just, oh, Journey. And I would look at this and try to figure out who was who. Um... Just love, I just love this record. This is my favorite Journey record um, because I, you know, it's it's got more keyboards in it, I guess. I don't, I don't need to defend myself. You can't deny it's a great record. So there you go. Uh, my favorite Journey album of them all, Frontiers, on Amazon. Sorry, got a phone call. Um, Amazon Prime, 10 bucks. Uh, all right, that's my number one Journey record. I'm going to talk a little bit more now. Um about all the things that the members of Journey did when they weren't in Journey. So, oh, very quickly here. 
I got all the Journey remasters, all the remasters, because they have different artwork and bonus songs and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The one, yeah, there's bonus songs on Frontiers. Ask the Lonely and uh, Only the Young were supposed to be on Frontiers and were pulled off in place of Back Talk and Troubled Child. Um, it's a Back Talk. They should just dump that. Um, but there you go. Liberty, by the way, is on that, that, that soundtrack earlier. But anyway, I got all the remasters. So there you go on that. Now, how long have I been talking? Oh, my God, 40 minutes. Oh, my God, 40 minutes. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to try to... My phone's going to gonna get too hot. So here we go. The members of Journey were in other bands. I've already talked about this one, but uh, Neil Sean and, ben, uh, and uh, uh, Jonathan Kane went on to form Bad English. I've already got a thing about Bad English up here, so you can check that out. I don't need to say anything else about them other than gorgeous, awesome, get it. You love Journey, get the Bad English records. Um, Steve Smith and Greg Rowley and... Um, Ross Valerie went on to form The Storm, which I've also talked about before. The Storm made two records. If you can love Journey and don't have these, get them. They are the the Storm records were my direct inspiration for this album that I made. I tried to be the Storm. Awesome, beautiful stuff. Um, Ro Ross Valerie met Kevin Schaffon, who was a singer for The Storm, because they did this record together, The Vu. Um, I can't highly recommend this, but uh, it's definitely good. Keys of the City is great. But this is an album with Kevin Chalfont. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I, I, that's how I've always said it in my head. Um, and Ross Valerie. And it's, it's you know, it's it's a it's a Journey-esque band. So there you go. The Vu. Uh, Neil Sean was in Hardline on this record with their hits Hot Sherry, uh, I Love Life's a Bitch, uh, and uh, Jonathan Cain did some of the writing. Can't Find My Way is Gorgeous. I'll Be There. Um, good record. I'm, gonna, I'm just rifling through these now because there's a lot of these also. Neil Sean was in Hardline. Neil Sean was also on this one with Sammy Hagar. Sammy Hagar and Neil Sean made a one-off record. Uh, HSAS. There you have on that one. Um, I mentioned earlier that Jonathan Cain talked to John Waite when they were in the Babies about open arms. So Jonathan Cain was in the Babies. Not for their whole career, but for like the tail end of it. Um, so they made five records um, with the Babies that... Jonathan Cain was only in a couple of them, but there you go, the babies. You probably know them by their song, Back on My Feet Again, or Every Time I Look at You, Think of You. Look at that. Uh, Neil Sean was also in a Braxis pool with uh, Greg Raleigh and um, Michael Shreve, who was in the H. This, was, uh, this sounds a lot more like Santana, um, but it's a thing they did. I love Boom by, uh, by Lee My Cha Cha, Waiting for You is cool. Jingo is awesome, but it's, it's not Journey. It's just guys from Journey were in this. So there's a Braxis pool. Anybody got that? Steve Perry made some solo records. You know O'Sherry from his first record, uh, Street Talk. Uh, I like most of this. I didn't love as much as others do. I love O'Sherry. I love Foolish Heart. Um, actually, I like Strong Out, but about half of this I don't really love. Oh, look, there's bonus tracks on here. Yeah, the same person that stole my uh, Red 13 also stole my original copy of this. Um, wow, I don't know some of these. I got some bonus tracks to listen to. So anyway, Steve Perry's first solo record sounds a lot like Journey, so if you don't have it, get it. And then for The Love of Strange Medicine, which was pretty solid. It's my, it's, I like this one more than I like Street Talk. Sorry. Paul Taylor from Winger did a lot of co-writing on this. Great, great songs on here. You Better Wait, Young Hearts Forever, Stand Up Before It's Too Late, Donna Please. I love Donna Please. Anyway, is about the Journey breakup. So if you listen to the song Anyway by Steve Perry, it's actually about Journey breaking up. And then Somewhere There's Hope. Great stuff on here. Um, great stuff. And then he's got a greatest hits with some unreleased stuff on it. So there's Steve Perry's uh, solo output. Jonathan Cain has a lot of solo records, but I only have two of them. That is Instrumentals, and uh, this is him singing. Um, great song on here called I Wish That I Was There For You that he co-wrote with Jonathan with John Waite. There's a version out there that uh, Marcy Free sang that i got to get my hands on. I don't think I have it. This is good. There's a heartbreaking song called My Old Man. Uh, Little River is a great song. He does his own version of Faithfully. Which if you ever need a proof, if you ever need to see what production, how big of a deal production and the way things are recorded matters in making a hit song, listen to, no disrespect, listen to this version of Faithfully and then listen to this version of Faithfully. This was a hit. This would not have been a hit. Same song, same chords, same melody, same words, different way of recording it. And it would not have been a hit. So production 
can make or break anything. Production can also make a crappy song good. Or a good song crappy. Uh, I love the song uh, Woman Never Forgets. Some good stuff on here. And it's, you know, the guy who co-wrote a lot of stuff on, on Journey being his own guy. He's got more stuff I gotta get. I don't have it. Jonathan, uh, Neil Sean has a lot of, uh, Sean, Sean, now I can't know how to say his name. Has a lot of solo records. I'm just gonna show them to you. Uh, Jack Blaze, by the way, did some co-writing on this one. So there's a, a, a solo record. Here's a double solo record. It's a double disc. Uh, Vortex, Neil Sean, Electric World. Neil Sean, Beyond the Thunder. Neil Sean, Late Night. I have a CD review of this on my YouTube channel. Neil Sean, Eye on You. Neil Sean, Piranha Blues. Neil Sean, The Calling. Neil Sean is a busy, busy dude. In addition to the Journey stuff, he's got all these solo records. He's got a Braxis Pool, Bad English, Hardline. It's crazy. Uh, so, Neil Sean, solo stuff. Oh, I'm almost done. Okay, and then there's just random stuff that I think is interesting that members of Journey were on. Steve Smith, the drummer for Journey. Very few people know this, by the way. Steve Smith was an insanely great jazz drummer. He was so much better than Journey. He was a, He's one of the best drummers who ever lived. The guy in Journey. The guy who plays open arms is one of the greatest drummers ever. Uh, he played on this. He was the drummer on Tony McAlpine's Edge of Insanity. Um, he's played on a million things, but this is the one I have. So there's this. This is cool stuff. He also played drums on the song Heaven by Brian Adams. Baby, you're all that I want when you lie here in my arms. Steve Smith from Journey is playing drums on that song. Just that song. Uh... The drummer Ainsley Dunbar, who was on the uh, first handful of Journey records on uh, Infinity and Evolution and, the, and, the, and, the, and these three, played drums on this record by Whitesnake. So the same guy that played drums on Lights by Journey played drums on Still of the Night. Anybody know that? But yeah, he was the drummer for this record. Uh, Jack Blades. Uh, oh, Neil Sean co-wrote some songs with Jack Blades on this record. On his first solo record, uh, Steve Ajeri, who took over lead vocals for Neil uh, for uh, Steve Perry, was the singer for this band, Tall Stories. They got one record, maybe they got two actually, but this is the one I have. Um, Jonathan Cannon and Neil Sean went and helped Michael Bolton out with this record. They co-wrote some stuff and played on it, so there's a good uh, there's some influences of Journey on this. Uh, You're all that I need is just a Journey song with Michael Bolton singing, um, but they're on this. Neil Sean also co-wrote some songs on Mickey Thomas's Over the Edge record. Jonathan Kane co-wrote This Is The Night, This Could Be The Night from Loverboy, which is a beautiful song. Um, and then he wrote a song on the Heights soundtrack. Anybody remember the Heights? Why do you talk to an angel? Actually, it's How Do You Talk? And he didn't co-write that one, but he wrote a song called I'm Still On Your Side. Great songs on here, actually, a couple of them, but he only wrote that one. Joanne's a great song. Anybody know the song Joanne by Zachary Throne? That's a great song. Um, and that's it. I also know that they had uh, Jonathan Cannon and Neil Sean were on Jimmy Barnes' Freight Train Heart, but I don't have that record. Or else I'm going to show it to you. What did I miss? I know I missed some stuff. Oh, by the way, if you go on Amazon Prime, they make a collection. There is a collection of five records by Journey for $18. It's these ones. It's it, it's Evolution, Infinity, Raise on Radio, Escape and Frontiers. It's this little package for 18 bucks if you want to save money. But I really suggest you just get the real thing because you get the artwork. If you get that package, they just come in little sleeves. But uh, get the records. I shouldn't even have said that. Get the records. Open up the booklet. Look at it. Enjoy it. Um, I think that's it. I don't know if I hit all the things I wanted to hit or not, but there it is. Um, uh, I can't say enough about how influential Journey was to me. And, uh, you know, because obviously I went out and bought everything I could that they did, and they inspired me to write. I wanted to be Jonathan Cain. I still want to be Jonathan Cain. I want to just play keyboards and sing backup and write stuff for other people to sing. Um, but huge, huge band who had a, a total mountain of material. And um, get it. I mean, you got you got to get those classic records. Yeah, so. Uh, I think that's it. If I upset anybody I didn't mean to, these are just my personal opinion, man. This is the way I feel about one of my favorite bands ever. They really were that balance between the crazy hard rock stuff and then the balladeer stuff where I really could dig in and enjoy it. Um, what did I miss? I don't know what I missed. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do another one of these. I have three left to do. I've, I've looked it up. I have three left. Maybe four, because I bought some stuff since I've been doing this that I probably should just, I'll just flash and show it. 
Um, I don't know when the next one's going to be. I'll find out. The next one is going to be about Brian Adams. And I'm going to probably talk this long about Brian Adams. I don't think as many people are going to care about that one. Here you go. I almost talked for an hour. That's insanity. Uh, no. Sorry, I already talked about White Snake, Craig. You missed it. Um, all right. Brian Adams will be up next. That's all I got. Um, yeah. I'll put a little uh, Spotify playlist on here for the album cut stuff that you've probably never heard. But there's some beautiful, beautiful stuff. Some of my favorite songs of all time. Most of the best music is not on the radio. It's on the albums. Which kind of, that's why it sucks. The album is kind of a dying thing now. All right, now I'm just rambling. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.